Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about a revelation I received from the Lord as I was reading in Matthew 21. And uh, we're kind of entering into that Passover season and I thought this would be a really good thing to talk about. And, um, and just kind of remind everybody, you know, uh, how the church is intended to be functioning right now in this uh, age of grace and uh, where that um, that baton was passed off to the church uh, back uh, at Passover um, in right before Jesus passed right before Jesus was crucified so I want the there's four different things I want to talk about first of all that um, when Israel rejected Jesus as their Messiah they were placed under a curse and I'm gonna go over the scriptures that talk about that and I want to talk about how the job of building the kingdom of God and um, producing good fruit was then passed on to the church for the church age and um, and I, I want to talk about that the day that Israel casts off that unbelief Israel will believe Israel will come into faith in Jesus uh, during the tribulation that's going to happen and I'm going to talk about um, the scriptures that that tell us that and uh, and that there is no basis for replacement theology the church yes we are here now doing uh, what Israel did the first 4,000 years but we will be um, <clears throat> we will be uh, at some point taken off the earth and then Israel is going to uh, come back into faith in Jesus and then the fourth thing is, uh, as we build, the important thing to remember is there is only one foundation, and that is Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Okay, so this started, um, basically, I was given a dream at the beginning of the year where the Lord, uh, when I woke up, told me, you know, basically, it was time to build. It's time to, to start building in the kingdom and um, continuing with the teachings on truth and things like that. And so I was leafing through a Southern Living magazine the other day, and I um, I saw this title. It, it just it popped out at me. I knew it was the Holy Spirit speaking, and it said, it's time to build. Okay, so basically the Lord's saying, it's time to get to work here. And so um, as I was reading in Matthew chapter 21, I think it was that same morning, um, all of a sudden some things just stood out to me that I had never realized before. Um, in Matthew uh, chapter 21, verse 19, all right, Jesus is walking with his disciples. Now, mind you, this is when they are coming into Jerusalem for the Passover season. Uh, he, Jesus had sent some disciples to go get the donkey. And uh, so this is the time when Jesus is going to be crucified. This is the end of his journey on the earth. And so he, it, the Bible says he comes across the fig tree and there were only leaves on it. There was no fruit. So this is what Jesus says, no longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. Now the disciples were trying to figure out why the fig tree could withered so quickly. And um, Jesus said this, truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. All right, so for the first time, it hit me that Jesus wasn't, you know, what this wasn't about the actual fig tree. This was about Israel. So Jesus speaks a curse over Israel at this point in time that because uh, she wasn't bearing fruit, uh, there, she would be under a curse and no longer would she be the one producing fruit. And, um, and the mountain here uh, speaks of, I believe, Jesus himself and, and the unbelief that Israel had in Jesus is a mountain. It is a stumbling block, okay, as the scriptures tell us that Jesus is the stumbling block. And their unbelief in Jesus is a huge obstacle, okay? Now that we know someday that's going to be taken out of the way. I'm going to go over uh, scriptures that talk about that. But the important thing to remember first here is how um, Jesus is telling Israel by by cursing that fig tree that they would no longer be um, they would no longer be the ones producing the fruit but it would be given to somebody else and Jesus comes out and he he states that specifically if you go down into um, if you go down to Matthew 21 what is it 43 
Jesus says, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. Okay, so this is, he was speaking to the Pharisees when he said this. So basically, this is a prophecy concerning Israel and the church age. And the the, the job of building, the job of producing fruit has now been handed over to the church, all right? This is, this is Jesus making this very clear uh, that the time of Israel's, um, you know, carrying that mantle is over. And, um, he, and the reason is because of the mountain. It's because they refuse to believe in Jesus. And Jesus goes on to share two parables, the parable of the two sons and the parable of the landowner, to demonstrate how Israel just refused to believe. The parable of the two sons, um, you know, it talks about where... One son said, um, no, I won't go into the field and work, but then he later did. And then the other son said, oh, yes, I will go into the field and work, and then he didn't. All right, so he's comparing tax collectors, prostitutes to the Pharisees and saying, basically, because they believed in me, even though they were, you know, disobedient to begin with, they came to me, and now they are entering into eternal life, and you are not. And he talked about the landowner, and this landowner um, hires out uh, his some vine growers in his land to produce fruit <clears throat> and then later sends the slaves to go um, collect the fruit while well, they they kill one slave and they beat the other and anyway by the time the landowner sends his son they're saying well the you know this is the son he's the heir we'll go ahead and take his inheritance and we'll kill him of course referring to the prophets and Jesus himself and this is what uh, happened at Calvary. So Jesus is prophesying about what is actually going to take place. And um, it's it's kind of scary and ironic at the same time because Jesus then, after he tells them what the, what the vine growers did, he asks them, he asks the Pharisees, what do you think the, the owner of the field is going to do when he comes? And they literally speak the curse against themselves because they say, they say this, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and will rent out the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him the proceeds at the proper season. That's Matthew 21, 41. So these vine growers, okay, these these Pharisees basically sp spoke the, the curse against themselves. This is what was going to happen. And it did happen. And again, it was all because of their unbelief. You know, and Jesus emphasized that, emphasizes that in Matthew 21, 32, where he says, for John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. You know, there were prophets that were sent. John the Baptist was sent, and then Jesus came, and they didn't believe. Uh, but the day will come, all right, why, when Israel will believe. And for those of you who think that the church has replaced Israel, <clears throat> you have to understand there was a covenant with Israel before there was a covenant, you know, with the church. So Israel is not forgotten, and uh, the Apostle Paul makes this extremely clear to us. Um, in, what is it, Romans 11, verses 25 through 29. And this is really important to understand, church. Yes, we have a job to do, but we are not a replacement for God's people, Israel. Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. All right. And we're waiting for that. That's symbolic of Pentecost. Pentecost means fullness, 50. So we're waiting for that time of the fullness of the Gentiles to come in. Um, and when that com when that's completed, the church, we know, it will be taken off of the earth. And then Israel will go into the seven years of Jacob's trouble where the Lord will bring them into faith in Jesus. Okay, so, but they experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. All right, so you've got to get that. It, I mean, it, this is important. We have to understand God's plan for Israel as well as his plan for the church. Um, and as we are sharing the truth of God's word, as we are building in the kingdom, there is only one foundation. And this is critical because uh, so many teachings out there today are not uh, founded on 
you know, the Lord Jesus and on the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, there's there's just so, so much junk out there. And this is why it's important for us to be Bereans. You know, go search the scriptures out for yourself. Don't just take somebody's word for it. Don't take my word for it. You go do your own research and, and seek uh, God and seek the truth on your own. And he will teach you. The Holy Spirit is our instructor, our teacher. And so, um, you know, the Apostle Paul makes it clear there's only one foundation. And he says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, we know, is the Word of God. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, all right, now that would be good building material, uh, wood, hay, or straw, and that's bad building material, there will be their work will be shown for what it is because the day, and that's the day of Christ, the day of judgment when the church is at the Bema seat, will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Okay, so the, the building that we do, we have to be sure, is being done in a motive of love, okay? Anything we do outside the motive of love is going to be like wood, hay, or stubble. It will be burned up on that day. Uh, we know from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where Paul tells us, you know, if I speak in tongues of men and angels, um, but have not love, I'm but a resounding gong. You know, if I surrender my body to the flames and give all that I possess to the poor, but have not love, I gain nothing. Um, you know, if you go through all of that without love, <clears throat> nothing you do is going to count for anything. And so this is important for us to check our motives and to to let the Lord search our hearts, invite him to show us if there's any wrong motives, if anything we're doing isn't being done in a spirit of love. And, uh, you know, this is, this is just an important part of how we are to walk out our faith with the Lord and uh, not so that we can, um, yes, rewards are important, but I mean, the greatest reward is going to be that we have delighted the heart of the Lord Jesus. That's the reward I believe we should be looking for, you know, and uh, that we have pleased him, that we have honored him uh, by getting it, you know, which is the the command to love one another. And that's that's where we need to be at church. And so I wanted to just share this with you. Uh, please take it to the Lord in prayer. I mean, we all have a different call. We all have different giftings, but we need to use them right now for the Lord. We need to occupy while we're waiting. Uh, I don't believe we have a lot of time left. So the time is uh, critical right now. The time, How we spend our time, what we're doing is critical. So I encourage you to just seek the Lord on this, what he would have you to be building, the fruit uh, that, that he wants to produce in your life and, uh, and help others to edify others. So again, I hope this message uh, does bless and encourage you. And as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.